watch the reflation trade last week, it absolutely crushed on the words of Jerome Powell last Wednesday. But the truth of the matter is certain corners of the reflation trade were already starting to weaken before he spoke, before Jerome Powell spoke, Powell. And so in some ways, you know, could we have thought some of the discounting and disappointment was priced in? Well, that was definitely not the case. So as the dust settles, we're seeing certain corners of the market, the broader indices, really start to reprocess what was said. And I call this seller's remorse, right, in the market, you know. So in other words, we had all sorts of selling and the markets in the S&P and the NASDAQ, those two specifically said, wait a minute, we really overdid it. Now, remember that tech is heavily weighted within the S&P. We also have financials quite heavily weighted in the S&P. And we have healthcare also heavily weighted in the S&P. So it's, it's definitely going to get a boost, the S&P, from tech. We know the NASDAQ had been coming on strong. And as long as the 10-year uh, as long as the 10 year yield doesn't go uh, going skyrocketing again, the NASDAQ and then the S&P could get a really nice boost. This is not, however, going to help the Dow. The Dow definitely was where the reflation trade was playing out the best. The Dow, as I've mentioned many times over the past, say, two to three months, is where disproportionately the reflation trade is going to be the most beneficial. So it's not as if the Dow is crumbling either, but the trend was much more, much more broken, much more volatile, uh, you know, red grab candles way beyond the wave. There was plenty here to be, you know, shy about, concerned about, and just leave this corner of the market alone. All right, so then we know if, if the S&P and the NAS have done the best job maintaining their trends, we can then start to look at corners of the market like Healthcare, which I really, really like. We've been long healthcare in Sector Secrets uh, for some time. We know healthcare is heavily weighted within the S&P. That's something we talk about quite often in the futures room. So then the other corner of the market at the sector level that I like is energy. And XLE, OIH, XOP are going to continue to track with that. So keep in mind, you can look at something like the crude oil market, which is punching up to a brand new high today, Reflation trades everywhere did not get crushed. Energies, which is reflation reopening, and what OPEC has been communicating in terms of rate, uh, their their version of a rate hike, <laughs> which would be uh, looking at increases in uh, in production, which typically would be potentially bearish to this market. Uh, have we've continued to see? Our Bob gas, we continue to see crude oil. And unrelatedly, uh, I say unrelatedly because OPEC's really not going to have a direct impact on natural gas. Even natural gas has gone double green, which is going to help those three sector ETFs that we've looked at already. So we just have to realize that the the pool of opportunity has, has shrunken a little bit for the short term. But there are plenty of places on the longer term time frames where if we're patient enough to wait for a setup and diligent enough to, to find those corners of the market that are still uh, moving higher with a nice double green, there are opportunities to be had. The other thing we can do is just simply shorten the time frame. In other words, you know, take a look at something like the S&P and say to ourselves, look, if I know that for the next two to four, maybe six weeks, definitely the next two weeks, the market's going to consider and reconsider and be highly sensitive to anything that comes from the Federal Reserve in terms of, did they really mean to make us think that rates are going to be higher in 2023? Are we really going to see taper that soon? Uh, you know, things that are going to send stock buyers for the hills. We're going to be very sensitive to that. We could see a lot of volatility and we could see a lack of organization meaning the trends that are following through and punching up to higher highs without breaking their wave, breaking their trends. And then meanwhile, that might be harder and harder to come by. So one of the tactics that I've always employed during summer is 
to not require that session after session of clarity, not require trends, not worry about really, frankly, what happens even after 1130. It's very freeing for a lot of traders, especially during summer, to not have to worry about session after session clarity, or even more so to not have to worry about whether or not a trade they entered on Monday is still gonna be a trade that's valid on Wednesday or follow through into Friday, right? We don't have to worry about this if all we're concerned about, paying attention to, need clarity through, are the first 120 minutes of the day. So having said that, one of the things that I'm gonna recommend we do is use time, price, volatility, and volume to find the signals using HPMR, using Darvis, using the V-score, using breach retreats in order to get short-term opportunities in the morning and then call it a day. Now, if that sounds really appealing to you, and that's the way I've been living my trading life for the most part over the last 30 plus years, um, you know, especially the day trading since say 1999 where the E-minis were so much more liquid and available, right? So as soon as the E-minis came out, uh, 99 was the S&P, we got the NASDAQ in 2000, and by 01, we had the YM. This was a whole lot easier to day trade than routing your order to the pit. Some of you might remember those days. So ever since the E-minis, ever since this summer, it's come up on 20 years, it's been a whole lot easier to get nimble, short-term time frame to indices. Once you know where the indices are going, you have the opportunity to take advantage of the sectors and the stocks. So now you can day trade the options on those, and just be freed up to focus on the first 120 minutes of the day, and then don't worry about what happens the rest of the day. Check out simplertrading.com forward slash climb. The class happens this Saturday. I'll see you there. In the meanwhile, be cautious, shorten the time frame if you need to, and I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.